now let's just get started with a new topic and the topic will be pretty straightforward okay so what is the new discussion that we're going to be making today and what is going to be the topic for today so in this lesson we're going to be starting with another rest client and this is called open fame so so far if you guys understand you know we have developed a couple of different uh, applications right here over here called adway service and the employee service and these are some small small microservices that we have built and also in the last session we understand how we will be actually making a communication between this couple of things and we have discussed couple of rest clients can anybody let me know what are those rest clients using what rest clients you can make rest calls anyone rest template rest template a rest template and the web client okay this is a couple of things that we have learned in the last session okay in this session i'll be talking about the fain client so the fain client is a client is a rest client which has been originally given by netflix okay so netflix used to netflix i'm talking about the same netflix that you used to watch every day okay or you are you, uh, you are watching every day okay so netflix is a video streaming site you everyone know about it no no knows about netflix so netflix internally was using fain for a very longer period of time and then later they have stopped using it in their internal projects and then they made that particular project open source and they have um, you know given that particular projects to the software community and they said okay if anybody wants to use it they can keep using the fain client to make rest calls but we are not going to provide any support right now for this and we will not be working on this particular project anymore and then uh, maybe as you guys know netflix has a open source community that's called netflix oss okay and under like netflix oss stands for netflix open source software uh services or software community or something like that okay so as part of that netflix has tons of projects that they have contributed to the software community and people like us can obviously netflix is a pretty big company and if they are using something like you know they should be well tested so we can take their you know copy and we can start developing it start improve uh, start uh, improving it start adding new features to that and as i said previously netflix uh, people they have created the fan client and then they stopped working on stopped working on that and made it a part of the netflix oss community uh, but even after that as it is a uh, as it is a open source software uh, like you know it starts getting a lot of updates and features even after netflix stopped working on that okay so the developer like us you know started contributing on those particular things and the fan client starts getting a lot of updates in the recent future and the fan client is one of the hot favorite when it comes to the microservices because the way we going to be using it the more easier it makes to write code and i'll tell you why it is pretty famous but as it as i told you guys that the netflix has started um you know the netflix has given us this particular uh, client called fan client as part of a open source community uh, from that day it is we are also calling it as open fan okay so fan client became open fan so whenever you are hearing fan client and uh, open fan client they both are same so right now i'll tell you how to use the open fan client to make rest calls and we'll be pretty much using the same in our uh, microservices development um whenever we going to be making any rest calls we'll be using open fan from now on and i'll tell you the benefits of it okay and you guys should have one more thing in your mind before we proceed further that when it comes to making things easier nobody can beat spring okay and spring is even you know spring has a lot of adaptation from netflix right a uh, lot of softwares lot of uh, you know projects is borrowed from netflix and started improvising that so just like that spring also has adopted the open fan client from netflix and given a lot of spring features to that or 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 you know added some lot of uh, spring features to that so that it will be even more easier to use the fan client um or the open fan client using the spring uh you know using the spring dependency and this spring dependency 
that is basically given by the Spring Cloud, okay, for the open frame. And we'll be learning about that right now. Okay, anyhow, so these are the couple of micros. Okay, coming back, coming back, a lot of theory, a lot of stories. Okay, coming back, we have a couple of microservices called address service, called employee service. And if you remember in the last time, in the employee service, we, uh, we were making some REST calls. So if I'll go to the source main Java, and if I'll go to the, you know, uh, service inside the employee service, we have written some code and we are making some call. Okay, and you can see right over here, we are making a REST call using the web client. Okay, and also I, I have told you how to, how to use REST template to make a REST call. We are making a REST call here to the ad slash address slash ID using the REST template get for object method. But today I will be neither using this nor I'll be using the web client. So what I can do guys for now, let me, let me not touch this particular project because we'll be keep on developing this one. Let me copy and paste it and let me say employee service two and new so that I can keep doing my modification right here. Uh, and I can teach you guys the open fan client and this one we will be start using it uh, from our next session. So for now, I'm just closing this particular project. We'll be start touching this from our next session and we'll be start using this particular project to develop our, you know, uh, to, to learn our today's session. Now coming back to the employee service too, first of all, let me uh, just, um, you know, remove some of the things that we don't need right now. So let me go to the application config and I can simply remove the web client bean because I will not be using web client to make any rest calls. And also in my controller right now, controller I think it should remain same. In the service I was making some rest calls. So I can simply remove this rest template, all this rest template code right now. I will not be using it. I will remove all the rest template code that I have commented out over here. And also I'll be removing the web client call that I'm making to this um, endpoint. This is also I'll be removing it. And for now I'll make it null. Okay, so this address response basically is something that we used to get using a REST call if you have followed our last, last session. So not a problem, I will close everything right now. So for now, what I will do, I will start, uh, these are my couple of microservices. I'll start this microservice just to make sure that things are working good. And also I'll start my new microservice right here called employee service to new. So run is Spring Boot app. So all my couple of microservices are right now running. So this thing is not yet up. Okay, right now it is up on the port number 49724 uh, and this is up in the port number 8081. Why this port number is 49724? If you remember, in the last session, what we have done in our application.properties file, we have done one thing. Can I open this application.properties file of my employee service? And right here, if you remember, we have basically uh, given the port a zero. And if we are giving the port number a zero, this port number will be dynamically generated by your server. So rather, what I can do, I can make it back to 8080 right now, do a control S. So the reload will happen and my employee service right now will up in port number, um, okay. Can I stop this and can I start this again? Employee service, start this again. So it will open port number 8080 right now because we have changed the port number, perfectly fine. So right now, the next thing that we'll be doing, can I open my, you know, uh, postman? And in my postman right now, let me make a call to my employee service. This is the address service. Okay, my address service is working to ascend, what is the port number for address, 8081, to ascend. 
Okay, now my address service is giving me an address back. If you remember, the address service is something that we have developed in the last session, which is gonna help us to fetch a address of a particular employee. And whenever I am hitting this endpoint called slash address app slash API, address slash one, this is basically giving me the employee address of the number one uh, employee. And this is the address one of the employee. And right now, uh, the same thing we will be doing uh, whenever we gonna be hitting our employees uh, information of the number one ID, what I expect that it should bring me the employee information as well as the address information. The number one employee stands for a village and right now is giving the address as null because we have removed our rest call and this is what will be start developing right now. So right now, uh, let me go to this particular address called slash employees slash one. And this is something that we have developed right here inside my employee service. Can I go to my controllers and right here in my controller, I got this guy, right? And this is the uh, endpoint which has got hit and this is the service call I'm doing internally. And inside this service, if you guys remember, um, you know, this is where I'm making a DV call. Okay, and this is the object I am converting uh, to my employee response and I am returning this particular object back. But right now this address response also I need to set with my employee response before I sending it and right now it's set to null. But right now instead of I set it to null, I need to give a valid address object by filling in the data here. Uh, uh, this particular object should have the data so that for that particular employee, the address response I should get and the data you know, and the property should be filled with data. And this call right now will be making through the fan client. Okay, so the uh, number one thing you got to remember. So before you're gonna make any fan client, this does not come pre with your, uh, you know, uh, starter uh, uh, starter thing that you have added or starter dependency that you have added in the pom.xml the first thing that you got to do you didn't to add a new starter okay and this starter you can click on this and can look for a starter called open fan okay click on this and click on next update your pom.xml and do a finish and right now if you're going to go to the pom.xml you'll be finding a couple of things the first thing you'll be finding here that the spring cloud starter fan. Okay, I, I told you guys, right? Open fan is the fan client and spring cloud has given a lot of spring feature on top of the fan client that Netflix provides. And this is the spring adaptation of the open fan client and it has Springify it under the Spring Cloud project, okay? And the Spring Cloud project is basically not part of your Spring Boot project. That's why you can see right now, uh, for the Spring Cloud starter that we have added, we have added a version number to this. And this is our Spring Cloud dependency version, 2021.0.3. And as I told you, Spring Cloud is not part of your main Spring project. This is a sub project of Spring Boot. And for that, you can see there is a parent form right here in, under the dependency management. You can see there is a dependency over here. And this is your Spring Cloud dependency. This is the dependency where the version number you have defined over here so over here you have defined the spring cloud version so this is the version of the spring cloud dependency you can think like this is the parent form for all your spring uh, spring cloud dependency like whatever the spring cloud dependency will be using for that we'll be using this version and this version we have mentioned over here Okay, and right now our fan client that we have added over here, this is going to inherit the version from the parent and our parent is this guy and this guy is using this version. So our open fan will this version of the Spring Cloud. Okay, so right now our fan client is ready. So for now what I'm gonna be doing, let me just, um, you know, update my Maven project. So I'll click on Maven and update project and we are good to go and our fan client is in our class path and we can make fan call or the fan uh, like the rest api call using the fan client okay so right now what we can do we can close our pom and we can come back to our employee service and we can start with our development so right now here this data we need to get using a 
uh, REST API call, okay? And the first thing that you can do right now, you can basically go to here and create a new interface, okay? And you can put this interface inside a package called, let's say, REST client or the FAN client, whatever you're gonna say. Let me say uh, FAN client. And inside this package, I will be placing an interface, not a class. And the name can be my fan client or my maybe I'm gonna be making a call to the address service. You know that I'm inside my employee service right now. And from my employee service, I'll make a call to the address service and I'm gonna be fetching the address data for a specific employee. And right now you can see I'm inside my employee service, which is right here inside this project. And from this project, I'm gonna make a call to this project. So this is going to be a call to my address service. So I can say a address um, fan client, address client, whatever you're gonna say it, I'm gonna say it as address client. Okay, and now this is gonna be your fan client. So you're gonna be making a annotation. You'll be using an annotation here called eight fan client. So can I see that? Okay, this is the annotation. Okay, now you got your fan client here and you got your address client here. If I'm gonna do control S, I think um, no error or exception here so far inside the employee service, fine. So things are good over here. So right now, the next thing that we need to do here inside this address client, um, this is basically, uh, okay, I'll, I'll tell you how to, how to write, how to call uh, your address service. So right now, my goal is here to call this endpoint. So I think we, uh, this endpoint we want to call. This endpoint we want to call, this one, control C, and we want to call Pen client, please help us call this endpoint, okay? So right now, this is the endpoint we will be calling, and this endpoint is where? This endpoint is where, can somebody say? Address last one, in which controller we have this one? Inside the employee controller, or this inside the address service we have something? Anybody? Address service. Address service, can I go over there? This is another project and this is our controller. So to this controller, I'm gonna be making a call, isn't it? Fine, remember this, this is gonna help you to do uh, development in two minutes. I'll tell you the process first and then I'll tell you a tricks. You can use that to develop fan, you know, endpoints in minutes, okay? For, so, for, so far, what we need to do, we need to make a call to this endpoint, okay? So I want to get a address, get address by employee ID. This is something that I want to do, isn't it? Employee, um, employee array <laughs> ID. Okay, so right now this is the endpoint I want to hit. So which endpoint I want to hit? My endpoint will be this one. This is my endpoint. This is my context path. This is my server name, isn't it? Okay, so this is my endpoint. Copy your endpoint and how to call an endpoint in your, um, you know, uh, Spring MVC. You can use get mapping for a get call, post mapping for a post call, and you can do exactly the same thing. So basically this, with this fan client, you can use the annotation like get mapping to make a get call. This is your Spring feature on top of your fan client, okay? That took the thing from the Netflix, and then they have given their own kind of annotation, like, okay, you want to make a get call? Okay, what is what is going to be your endpoint? This endpoint you want to hit? Okay, place it over here. And this is going to be your dynamic value, post it over here, like ID. Another thing is that whenever you are making any fan client, this is an interface, and in, inside the interface, the method will not have any body. So remove the body over here for now, and just end it over here. So right now, the thing is that somebody will call this method, okay? And you're gonna be hitting this endpoint. And what you will be giving back, you will be giving back a address object. Let's say address response, you're gonna be giving them back, right? So why you are going to give them the address response back? Because you remember the uh, employee service, what you are needing over here? You need the address response so that you can set this address response with the employee response that you are returning whenever somebody is asking for a employee data. And with that employee data, if you remember, the address response will also go like this, uh, like this, okay? Right now we need to fetch this data by making a, uh, uh, making a uh, RESTful API call. So right now let me go back, let me go back to my address client, so things are looking good, and right now we can call this API, 
okay so right now do control c go to your employee service and right here you can call that particular method this method but how you will be calling this particular method obviously you need the object of address client right so now let me just copy this address client go to my employee service and now let's just create an instance of that address client and then address client okay and just do a control shift o to have an import and do it auto word okay that's it auto word so make it a private variable okay and take this address client and use it over here address client dot get uh, address by employee id the error is gone so what i did i created a client i i created a method i have given my endpoints that i want to call and now this method I am calling in my employee service. Okay. And right now in this get address by employee ID, I want to call this one and I'm expecting that it will get me a address response back, which is absolutely fine. This is how we have developed this particular method. This is going to get you this particular object back by making this rest call. But whenever it is going to make this rest call, you also need to have this ID. So how will be getting this ID right now? So obviously whenever you will be calling this method right here inside your employee service right here you will be giving the id and that id is going to be this one if you remember this is going to be your service call and this call is going to come from your employee controller if you remember employee controller is basically making a service call right here by placing the id and this id we are getting it uh, whenever somebody is going to hit our endpoint and now this ID we are sending it to our employee ID right here we'll be capturing this and now this ID you just pass it over here so now obviously this ID we cannot pass it over here because inside this method we also need to capture it so write it into ID we just capture it and also tell spring that whatever ID you are capturing here you just use a path variable annotation to uh, to you know set this id this path variable is id copy this and paste it over here now what will happen you are capturing the id and placing the same id right here with the url so whatever the id will come right now from your controller inside your service that id will be placed over here you're going to be making a call that id will be binded to here and you're going to be getting an address response back so this is what we have done so far pretty simple pretty fascinating you might be thinking right now okay well ask how it is going to work right now because i understand in your service you made a rest call over here and in this rest call you are passing the id and that id you are capturing over here and using the path variable you are setting it with this endpoint and you are expecting that now spring will basically make a rest call like this and it's going to get you the address response back but you don't have any implementation for this you don't have to write any implementation this is basically a proxy class and that's the beauty of the fan client you don't at all need to write any code you will just define your endpoint create a method write the return type and return type you can ask to somebody right who are developing the services you ask them like okay which endpoint i have to hit what is going to be the return type and accordingly you can design the thing and this is going to get you the things back and spring will create a implementation of this particular method and going to hit this endpoint internally whenever you're going to be actually calling this particular method that's why this is what i called a proxy the proxy for this proxy the implementation will be generated by spring you remember in your spring data jpa in the spring data jpa what you did if you remember in your um, repo you have created some classes like this employee repo extends to this guy and then all the find find method find all method get by method everything has been given to you free of cost by spring and they are creating the implementation for this in the runtime same way for the employee service uh, for your address client for this proxy also uh, the implementation will be generated a proxy implementation will be generated during the uh, like during whenever you are hitting this endpoint okay and to make this magic happen you just go to your main root application maybe i can just go to the root application or in your configuration class wherever you want you just enable the fan client enable fan clients okay that's it and right now all your fan clients are right now under the root package so inside the root 
uh, right now it is going to scan everywhere if you want to particularly mention where your particular fan clients are existing you can write base package and give this particular package name right now this package name just copy it and post it over here uh, like to let them know okay inside this particular package i have my fan clients but i have my fan clients inside um, the package of that but this is where i have in this is my root application now the scan will happen inside all the packages uh, that's not a problem and this particular package also will be scanned because this particular class is inside this particular package and after this package we have written fan client so this is our root so for our all the packages right now will be scanned because these packages are under this package right so cool so we have the enable fan clients right now so this is going to help me to create a proxy for this particular client okay so I am done so what I have done so far let me close everything I have done only three things let me just save everything okay so I have only done three things so far the first thing that I have done inside my pom.xml I have added my spring cloud dependency right here spring cloud dependency for open fan right here step number one step number two I have created uh, a client right here called address client and uh, first of all to make it a fan client I have added this fan client over here and then the third thing that I have done here I have created the method and I have designed my method accordingly like the method that I want to call and actually I'm making a call of this inside the service layer so my service layer is right here employee service right here okay and right now what I'm expecting that I, whenever I'm calling this method, I'll be hitting the service. But right now, you can see on my, um, you know, on my console, there is a problem here. And it is saying that address client could not be found. Hey, address client could not be found. Um, okay, address client, consider defining a bean for this inside your address client. I don't think I have to do this. Can I just um, address client? Control S, I think I have followed every package is perfectly. Can I do a couple of things? Can I, first of all, can I do right click, uh, update project, Mabin, update project, click on force update, do an OK. All right, so now let me just start the employee service one more time. Let's see that if we're getting a different error right now. Okay, right now this is a different error, right? Now this error is saying that, hey, um, either a name or a value must be provided for the fan client. They are saying that you are almost done and right now for your fan client, that's, you should be providing a name. What are you going to be calling to your fan client? I'm going to be saying that, okay, I'm going to be calling it. I'm going to be keeping a name. They are saying either you put a name or a value, right? So I'm defining a name and I'm giving my name as let's say ABC. Doesn't matter, it can be anything. And the next thing that I'll be doing here, you need to understand one more thing. Whenever you're gonna be hitting this endpoint, obviously this is your, this URL. Where is this part of the URL? Where is this part of the URL? So this part of the URL also I need to mention right over here. I can specify URL over here and I can mention this URL right here. Now you just look at that inside the employee service okay you're gonna be making this call and this call is right now gonna be hitting this endpoint and for the base url it is gonna be using this all right now do a control s and just restart your application let's see that whether we are able to start it okay so right now this is up and running there is no error in the console can i go to my postman to ascend and boom we got the data now tell me guys if you have any questions so far let me restart my camera yes please questions sir along with this admin client we used have one more application sir in the spring boot application main program uh, another application yeah uh, this one you are talking about ah uh, yes sir Enable fan, enable fan clients yeah what, what this enable fan, fan clients will do for you this guy will basically help you or letting spring boot know that okay you got fan clients defined in your application and for this interface which is a like you know interface you need to get the implementation and spring boot will generate the implementation for this in runtime isn't it cool you remember in the last time you were making a rest call you were 
you are doing a whole lot of things right there. But right now, you don't have to write anything. You just write this and the things will be generated in the runtime. The good thing about this is right now, guys, one good thing you can do if you have, if let's say you are in your office, right? And right now you got to develop, uh, you have access to both of your project. So right now, this is the project where you are working with. Now let me close everything. Okay, now let's say this is the project you are working with and this is where you're gonna be making a call. Okay, from here to here, you're gonna be making a call. Okay, now in this uh, address service, which method you will be calling? Inside this, inside this controller, you got this method that you will be calling. Add slash address slash employee ID. You give an employee ID and I'll get you back the address, right? So what you can do, you can copy this method signature, control C, close this guy and close this guy. You can go to the service from where you're gonna be making a call. So you're gonna be making a call right now inside the employee controller, right here, whenever somebody gonna hit the employee ID inside this service, you're gonna be making sure that you're gonna be giving them the address as well whenever you're gonna be returning the employee response. And this address you have to set over here. And for that you have developed your address client. You can blindly do what? You just do like you know whatever i told you forget about that you open your address um, controller one second one more time address controller copy the signature control c close this go to your the address client and paste it over here control v that's it you are done now you close this guy right here and that's it now you are ready <laughs> Nothing else you have to do. You just see same thing. Only the thing is that right now the return type is response entity of address response. In this case also, that's absolutely fine. You can just do control S right now. The employee service obviously will be getting a problem because this method right now not returning um, the address response is returning an address entity. So you can just do uh, dot get body. Okay, because it's going to get you the this is going to get you the response entity back response entity of ad maybe i can just do it in two lines so that it will make more sense i can just wrap it over here this is going to get you back assign statement to a new local variable this is going to be my response entity i can say it my address response entity so if you want to capture more things from the response entity like what status code and everything you can capture it but like you know you can just do address response entity dot get status code you can just, just just get all the other things but i'm only interested about the body the body will get me the address response back and right over here you can assign this to a new local variable assign statement to a new local variable this is going to be your address response get your address response and set it over here and there you go you are done now i just copy pasted the signature from my other project let's see whether it is working or not do control s let's go to our postman do hit the endpoint okay something on resolved compilation problem let's see there is a compilation problem somewhere uh, in my spring maybe right here where is the compilation issue? Control shift O, control O, I haven't saved it. That's the problem. Let me save it again. Go to the postman, do ascend. There we go. You are getting back your result. Let me know if it is making sense. Yes, please. Yeah, I, I, uh, one question actually I wanted to understand, mm -hmm. uh, uh, If uh, This interface must be implemented by some uh, default uh, uh, classes, right? This interface must be implemented by some default. Uh, you are talking about how the proxy is generated? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we, we, we will go into that, uh, Manish, for sure. Okay, we will go into that. I will do a whole variety of these things with this. Yeah, uh, we, we will go into that. Okay, I'll tell you like, you know, how the proxy is getting generated, how the things are getting implemented. They say another thing, this happened behind the scene and we can talk about that. But right now, that's not much important. Yeah, but yeah, there is some uh, like this is not like code generation. We are not actually generating any code uh, or spring is not generating any code for you behind the scene. It is basically giving you a implementation it is generating a proxy out of it and giving the implementation for this particular method so that it can call this method and can get back the response entity so that you can capture it just the way you are capturing it right over here. But uh, but with the method signature with the client with the, you know, uh, dependency, is there any questions? Can I get a confirmation from your end? Yeah, Vilas. Yes, Omic. So, uh, previously, it is like, uh, 
yeah it is like different configuration mm -hmm. but uh, previously like when we have used rest template mm -hmm. i think uh, we were putting something like uh, that mapping class inside that method right exactly suppose at the response but the thing is that we are doing the same it is not like that we are uh, having less code i think performance wise that will be good, absolutely right? like, uh, now think about so make you have you are working you you are some let's say this is where you are working on in the employee service right here okay now in this application you have to make 1000 rest call now think to develop that kind of using rest template how bulky or how much code you have to write to make a rest call but this is a declarative approach let me just let me just emphasize that particular word this is a declarative approach to make rest calls right we are making rest call only this is where this is somewhere we are calling the method but this method implementation we have not given so this is that we are just making the declaration we are just writing the method declaration but the implementation will be given by spring so this is a declarative approach right now i have copy pasted the code from here but in case you don't have access to this particular project ask them two things what is the endpoint what is the what is the return type that's it that's yeah, it like we can make one configuration class like like one configuration interface and then we can put all the methods for uh, different different microservices also right exactly this is for your address client you have another microservices let's say for course okay create a course client and specify the name of the application and also the url basically this name here this is just to make you understand but the best practice for the name you just you just give the you know application name that you want to call now i'm i'm calling this address service right so better if i'll make it uh, make this one as my whatever the application name that i have given what application name i have given here in my source main resources application.properties file the application name i have given address app better i could say it address service I'll say address service. Okay. Now copy this guy over here. This is going to be my application name. And in your employee service, let me collapse everything. In your this address client is there inside your employee service. And right here, the name you change it to address service. Right. Now this is going to be a best practice. How? Because whenever I'll be talking about the service discovery and registration, it is going to be make more sense. Why Avilast is telling this is the best practice. But for now, you can give anything as the name, but it's better if you can give like this. All right. Making sense? Yeah, yeah but the now thing is that how it is 
uh, improving better uh, like uh, performance improvement yes so that i think exactly be- that's something that we'll be talking about and also right now one more point here so make that why i am telling you that okay use fan client <laughs> okay isn't it yeah. why i'm telling you guys oh, use fan client oh like it should be having some features that is going to make your journey easy obviously one thing you can see that you have to write less co- or less code right here okay i'm going to tell you to write some more my uh, more services for me so that you can do some hands on but one more thing is that this particular fan client has better like in you know, a compatibility if you're going to talk about some other thing or you know that uh, spring has developed the spring cloud project for you guys to de- uh, to solve some of the common patterns that you have in microservices the challenges that you have the way you're going to be solving those challenges you don't have to write code for that spring has projects for that and those projects are wrapped around uh, a sub project called spring cloud and for spring cloud if you're going to see open fan is a part of spring cloud isn't it open fan is a part of spring cloud right now for other spring cloud projects if you are using the fan client like this it is going to be pretty much easier for you guys to configure it with the other spring cloud projects i'm going to be telling you how this is something which will not make more sense right now but we're going to be seeing it later but right now couple more things i want to tell you i want to close the other files okay before uh, we go for the next thing i want to tell you one more thing see guys here right now you are basically this is your url and this is your url path if you want to dif- uh, if you want to separate your path from your host now this is your path isn't it control like this is your context path if you remember the context path of the address application is this one so you can specify it differently like this okay this is your path this is your host okay and this is uh, this is the name of the service maybe i can tell my service name as address service and this is the endpoint i want to hit whenever i'll be hitting this endpoint this will be concatenate with this and this will be concatenate with this and you'll be getting the entire thing right here okay let me just test this out and then i'll tell you one more thing okay now saying i'm getting back the result now guys what about now now this is the important thing just listen to this now what about i will start a, another instance of my empl- um, let's say of my address service right now guys this is the scenario for you this is the problem scenario right now i have how many things running couple of things let me just uh, do one thing this is my address service running this is my employee service running i will create another instance of address service so let me just duplicate the config let's say duplicate config and right here i create a duplicate config and i'll try to open the configuration of this and i will just set at the argument for this server dot port at the same application i will run it on a port number let's say 80 Uh, this is deployed on 8081 no the first one is deployed on 8081 another one i will deploy it on 8082 okay let's do apply close and i'll start maybe i'll also do one more thing open config this is my server port and my application name is address service 2 and let's say this is running on port number 8082 apply close and now let me run this particular instance as well now i have couple of instances of my address service now see the magic now i have two things right now you can see <laughs> now you can see right here this address api do send i'm getting my address data back and another application is running on another instance called 8082 do a send and i'm i'm also getting my result back so i have right now deployed my address application in port number 8081 and also another application in an, another server you can think like i have created a different instance or different application same application i have deployed into the server again with another server with the port number this one is running on port number 8082 another one is running on port number 8081 now you have couple of address service why i have created another instance here because maybe my there are imagine this is a government project okay and lot of people are needing my employee address 
okay lots and lots of people are coming and telling me that okay tell me the employee address tell me the address tell me the address and i got a huge load on the address service that i used to have before that's why i created another server and i have deployed my application called address service right now and right now what i want i want to distribute the load some load should go to here some load to so should go to here now how this is going to be possible because from my employee service whenever this particular client is calling like when whenever this particular client is calling right now right here employee service whenever this is calling now this is hitting this guy here you have hard coded the url always the load will go to the application which has been deployed in the port number 8081 okay but i want sometime the load should go to here sometime the load should go to here i want the i want the load to be equally distributed between this couple of service but here you have hard coded the url so how can i specify more urls any idea how exactly you're going to be resolving the problem are you understanding the problem right now the problem is this can i just give some more spaces here look at that guys the problem is here right now let my let me have some more space imagine guys this is your address instance one this is your address address app okay address application one this is running on port number 8081 another instance of the address app you have you have deployed it inside a different server this is your address service two you have deployed in the port number 8081 okay now imagine this has been deployed on a server this has been deployed on a separate server absolutely every applications that you we have right now like employee service address service everything are spring boot applications and the spring boot is basically using tomcat server by default so whenever our start whenever we are starting our employee applications it has been deployed on a server and we have started two instances of our address server or address service and they have been you know uh, deployed into two different server right now in our employee we are making call to address service so right now every time whenever from our employee service whenever we are making a call every time the call is going to the port number 8081 because this is my server uh, this right now this is my server my employee service uh, maybe uh, the letters are not properly visible can i just uh, write it properly this should be my employee service now you think like this is your employee service okay and the employee service is running on port number 8080 this is a server this is a server this is a server now employee employee application is making a call to the address service and right now we are getting back the data but right now let's say lots of load is coming to this this particular guy so i have scaled up my application and created a, another instance of my address service so what i want sometime the load should go to here another time employee service is making a call I should route the call to here. Another request is coming to the employee service. I will route it to here. Another request is coming to employee service. The employee service also need to hit the address service internally. I'll route the call to here. So any request is coming. I'm equally basically maintaining the load here. Any request is coming. I'm routing the call to one of the service and I want to know how this thing will happen. Introduce load balancer, exactly. So Felix is telling, introduce the load balancer yeah load balancer is something that we'll be using can i know one thing right here guys can i know one thing here who is the client who is the server who is the client who is the server here any is, uh, employees. employee service is your client or employee service is a client or server client. client why you are saying it a client because it is it is requesting for address exactly you're re requesting to address fine so you can think every the client and server are the same thing but based on the scenario right now employee service is needing the address service data so employee is the client to the address is asking for data to address so address is the server right now now felix is given me an idea that maintain load balancing right now as i have told you guys my scenario is just like this I have scenario like this every time any request is coming let's say there are four requests coming all the four requests is going to here only 
all the four requests is going to here only to the 8081 port number okay the instance which has been deployed over here why because we have hard coded the url we have hard coded the url right here right now okay but if we have many urls if you have two servers right now for an example i have two address services i have scale up my address service because it is having lots of load so right now how can i distribute the load in between do these two things and there comes the load balancer and this is a client side load balancer because this um, right now this employee is a client right it's making a call to a particular another microservices right now here instead of making a call directly what i will do here i will just i will just remove this call from here i'll introduce a load balancer you can think like i'll keep a load balancer here l b r okay it's a load balancer and now this load balancer will do what it will help me sometime it will route the call to here sometime it will route the call to here okay and uh, another request comes it will route it to here another request come it will route it to here so sequentially it will route each request coming to the employee service to like you know different different instances of address server and this load balancer for this we can have spring cloud load balancer spring cloud has a load balancer so that's called spring cloud load balancer and if you are coming from a legacy background you also it's not legacy it's only two years back you also would have heard the name of ribbon okay so ribbon is a particular load balancer given by netflix you don't have to write any code to develop this load balancer or to make this pattern happens you can simply use the netflix ribbon okay to have the client side load balancing or right now spring has deprecated the ribbon not deprecated they have just simply removed the ribbon from 2020 i think from 2020 they have removed the ribbon as part of the spring cloud and they are recommending us to use the spring cloud uh, you know load balancer instead of the ribbon load balancer but as some of you are also using ribbon i'm decide i have decided to use ribbon in few of my lectures later on i will be using the spring cloud load balancer as a client side load balancer in this course but yeah uh, right now as we are already we are we are uh, it's already 8:42 right we are already done with our session maybe we can just go for a 10 minutes more session and we can just use ribbon for today and from tomorrow onwards anyhow i'll be switching it to spring cloud load balancer even though you can see right now what you can do if you're going to come over here right now this url i don't have to give right now because i want this url like you know this url i can have many urls and i don't have any attribute here called urls uh, to like you know you can see it's url only it's going to take a string and how can i specify multiple urls i can simply remove this url from here and i should have a load balancer configured to route my request to multiple uh, you know URLs or multiple uh, you know uh, multiple uh, servers uh, of address service but right now you can see as long as as soon as I removed the URL from here I got a problem here and it should be saying that it is not able to create the instance of employee service which is obviously this guy because here there should be a problem of here because this dependency this proxy it would have not created why because unsatisfied dependency employee service because address client is not getting created why it is not getting created because no pain client load balancing defined you have not defined the url over here then how can i call this service and how can i know like you know to whom to call if you have not defined any urls i'm suspecting that you have configured a load balancer and to the load balancer you have already told the load balancer like whatever the servers which are available that i can make use with but right now that's why he's saying no fan client for load balancing defined did you forget to introduce spring cloud starter load balancer it is saying that are you trying to tell me that are you trying to tell me that you got a application okay and that's called your employee service inside this employee service you have a load balancer defined and to this load balancer you have already told i have a server called localhost 8081 8, which is this one and also i have another server where the where you can basically make a call to the address service which is exist on 
लोकल होस्ट एट जीरो एट टू यू माइट बी और मे बी यू कैन हैव थ्री एड्रेस सर्विस यू कैन हैव एनदर एड्रेस सर्विस रॉन और यू कैन लोकल होस्ट सॉरी लोकल होस्ट एट जीरो एट थ्री मे बी यू कैन हैव थ्री फोर फाइव इंस्टेंसेस ऑफ एड्रेस सर्विस मे बी यू वुड हैव डिफाइन दैम इन दिस पर्टिकुलर सर्वर मे बी यू आर फॉरगेटिंग टू टेल मी दैट यू हैव डिफाइंड अ लोड बैलेंसर एंड यू हैव कॉन्फिगर ऑल दिस थिंग्स एंड राइट दे आर एंड दिस वाई यू आर नॉट मैंशनिंग द यू आर एल एंड मे बी यू आर ट्राइंग टू यूज आवर ओन स्प्रिंग क्लाउड स्टार्टर लोड बैलेंसर सो आई डोंट सी इट इन योर क्लास पार्ट सो आर यू फॉरगेटिंग एडिंग दिस so they are telling me this they are recommending me that okay are you planning to use the spring cloud starter load balancer because i do not see any urls over here okay they told you that i will be using the spring cloud starter load balancer but let me just tell you a little bit about ribbon as well it is not see from now on nobody from, from right now if you going to start a project you will not be using a ribbon you will be using spring cloud load balancer for load balancing but if you are using a legacy project i'm i'm sure most of you will have a project which where they are using ribbon and for for sake of few guys i also want to introduce let you guys know that we also have a load balancer a client side load balancer called ribbon and the way you can configure ribbon right now if you going to go here and click on add starter spring add starter you will not be finding ribbon here so if you're going to look for ribbon you will not be finding it and in order to in order to configure ribbon but if you're going to do if you're going to write load balancer you're going to be finding the cloud load balancer the one it, it is suggesting but i will show you the ribbon as well for for this session i can take 10 minutes more if you want and i can tell you how to configure ribbon and how to get it uh, done with ribbon how we can just do a load balancing quickly and tomorrow we will continue from there can i take 10 minutes more <laughs> guys is it possible yes sir okay yes okay okay so right now here what i can do first of all as i have told you right now inside the pom.xml it is right now it is not possible for me to add a load balancer because right now if you're going to see the spring cloud version that we are using right now this is my parent pom of spring cloud and the version i'm using is 2021 0.3 and for this dependency if i am going to search for this control c go to our google chrome search for dependency and if you're going to go for map and repository you're going to be finding a lots of lots of dependency and i think from here the ribbon support they have removed but i think all the hoxton uh, versions that you are seeing for spring cloud they have the support so maybe i can just go for hoxton sr5 i can copy this um, you know depend i can copy this version right now and i can downgrade my spring cloud dependency version my spring cloud dependency i'm going to use this version instead of 2021.0.3 i think this is the one that i'm using for my spring cloud parent version 2021.0.3 i'll change it to uh, what is that hoxton i just got it wrong maybe let me copy this let's use this one and whoever is following this lesson in whatever year you are following just use this dependency this is tried and tested your ribbon will work fine with this one okay just to find uh, from the next session onwards i'll be deleting this project and i will not be using ribbon but in in case you want to learn that then you just specify this dependency change your java version to 1.8 and maybe um do one more thing write here um What is the Spring Boot version I'm using? 2.7.3. Let me just get another Spring Boot version. Let's let's say Spring Boot uh, Startup Parent. Let me just search for this and Startup Parent. And let me just use 2.3 or something. 2.3 series. They they are all came in 2021. 2.2, 2.1. Let me use 2.3. Uh, 2.3.2 2.3.1 let me let me use this one 2.3.1 release okay now get this done let me copy this particular release version of spring boot i'm downgrading my project just to use ribbon and want to show you that so you can just change the parent parent starter of spring boot now i changed the spring boot starter parent version i've changed my java version and i am downgrading my version of uh, spring cloud as well so next thing i'll be doing first of all let me just select everything 
command click on this stop this stop okay and right now let me just do a mabin update to my employee service mabin update project let me update the project let me do a force update okay this is done and i have downgraded my okay i haven't saved it so now it is going to start my build let me just do a mabin uh, update project one more time let me see if i am getting it done perfectly okay now the error is gone now i think i can get my ribbon in right i have downgraded my version so right now i can get my ribbon dependency so where is my ribbon search for ribbon here okay ribbon uh spring cloud spring cloud starter netflix ribbon this one this is also given by netflix only let me copy this control c this and paste this guy over here paste this guy over here control a control shift f remove the version because the version will be managed by the spring cloud parent startup parent and for the ribbon right now the version will be this this is our spring cloud dependency and the version will be hoxton sr5 and do a control s just make sure to change this these three versions in your spring boot application and just start try uh, try adding the ribbon right here to do the ribbon load balancing in the client side okay so now let's just go ahead and uh, let's just do one thing let's just, let's just go to our address client and right here we are not defining our urls over here so i'll be using ribbon so first thing is that i will make it a ribbon client ribbon can i just go for ribbon client and also i can will i'll give a name over here and the name will be address service can i copy this guy you can give any name over here but i am keeping it simple i'm making sure that whatever the service i'm calling i'm serving the address service i'm giving the application name over here okay you can give anything but whatever you gave right now here okay you just copy this guy go to your application.properties file okay and configure your urls right over there so i can just do open with and generic editor and you can start writing address service with this i want to use ribbon dot and i want to define my servers so ribbon dot list of servers okay and what are the different servers i have i have one running in 8081 can i copy this control c this endpoint can i copy it right now i'm not using it i can remove it and another one let's say it is going to run on 8082 copy this paste it right now i have two servers one is 8081 one is 8082 so there where i have defined my list of servers over here right now i can control s it and now let's do one thing first of all let me go to my address service let me start my address service one in port number 8080 and one will be in my port number 8081 okay 8081 8082 okay 8081 and 8082 i have given my server details now let me start this employee service right here start this do okay and let's just see if we'll be able to do the load balancing and whether my employee service right now sending some request to here some request to here is it started i think there is some problem here okay let's see what it is saying uh, error creating the bean name injection failed um, address service url uh, okay somewhere are we using the address service url somewhere i think we i have commented that one let me just remove it. I think we are not using it. Maybe in some of the other code that we have written, we are using it, but that's not a problem. Maybe let me just start this again. Okay, let me see whether we are able to start it. Okay, there we go. It is up. There is no error here. Fine. So now let's do one thing. Let's just do one thing in our address service because our employee service is right now. We have our load balance. Uh, we have a load balance configured let me just check it for creating the url let me um, just let me just call my employee service okay and my employee service is running on port number 8081 let me just do send am i, am I getting the data see i'm getting the data send i'm getting the data okay but i have not defined any endpoints here okay i have not defined any urls here urls it is picking up from the properties file and equally managing the load and how it is managing the load let me go to my my employee service is internally hitting which endpoint my employee service is internally hitting the address service and this endpoint 
okay so let's do one thing inside this find address by employee id let me have a logger sys out okay um, um finding address for employee okay and i will concatenate the employee id just having a logger here so that it will be helpful to track whether my load balancing which which instance is calling this one control f control s let me restart my server and now let's just do one thing guys this is my uh, let me close everything okay and now this is my address service 2 let me clear the console and this is my address service 1 let me clear the console so we have two instances running for address service and address service 2 and this is my employee service okay and for uh, right now what i will do let's just go to my postman let me hit this endpoint okay i'm getting the data but which instance is handling it 8081 or 8082 look at that it went to 8082 first and this has in the seeing the log finding the address per employee one okay but the other console that we have for the address service right now is empty so now the first request went to the instance which is on 8082 another time let me hit this employee endpoint it is going to internally call my address service let's see whether my uh, see right now we are inside the address service the another instance now the flow came here N now it, it basically handles the request and now if you're going to see the other instance previously handled my request now again this one handles this request okay now again if i'm going to be hitting this it is going to go to which server the other one right now see 8082 handle the request another time i'm going to hit it it is going to go to 8081 look at that it went to the address service which is running on port 8080 or 8081 right sometime it is going to 8081 and sometime it is going to 8082 okay so right now my load balancer is equal is is is, is like you know handling the load uh, and it is sequentially hitting the server one last thing over here so what what we have done this is our employee service okay this is our employee service and this is my address service one address service one and we have another application we also have our address service two here okay now one request will go here one request will go here so sequentially so if you have three instance then another request if one request will come it will go here another request it will go here another request it will go here so sequentially it is handling the load in a round robin fashion okay round robin fashion you know right sequentially some request is going to first request is going to here second is here third is here another request will come after third it will go to here another request will come to the employee service it will go to the second another will come it will go to the third so as as many server that we have it is sequentially distributing the load in a round robin fashion and that's how ribbon is working internally can we change this logic absolutely yes how can we do it we will do it in the uh, like you know i'll tell it with some other load balancer but yeah we can change this logic as well but right now sequentially we are basically distributing the load in all of my three servers that we have over here okay so this this is what you can see this is what we have defined okay now this is our 8082 it handled two requests now another one 808080 this handled two requests hit few more requests one two three four five now you can see see here 8082 handle this three i have hit five requests right and the other one this would have hit two request okay two three uh, five another one if you're gonna hit it is gonna come to here only do send it came to here only right to the 8080 8081 instance making sense guys any questions so far will i suppose microservice uh, has a lot of instances exactly so in this case we need to write that's the so that that's the disadvantage this is where it brings me to the next topic called service discovery and registration. Thank you, Somik, for raising this issue. Now, the problem with this particular approach here is that 
if we're gonna go over here, we are hard coding the instances and in your microservice environment, this is not possible. You cannot hard code the instances. Every time I'm gonna see, if you know, uh, okay, ribbon configuration dot class, why not use, uh, okay. That's a different thing. That's a different concept, Punkers. We can also specify the configuration class. Uh, yeah, we'll go into that later. But right now, one concept I want to tell you over here by looking into this particular line, what we have done here. Here, what we have done is in our microservices, if the load increases, my address service, I can scale up my address service into n number of instance, right? And this uh, instance will be scaled like horizontally, right? Previously, I used to have one instance, so more load came. I, I have scaled up one more. Then I scaled up one more. I feel this, this three server will not be enough. I'll scale up another server and I'll deploy my address service over here. So I'm scaling up my application right here horizontally. So one thing you have to know here that whenever you work with imagine uh, web services or uh, Google Cloud, there you never know what is going to be your server port number will be, what is going to be your IP address will be. Right now I'm using localhost, but there will be some dynamic IP address. And let's say one, like your load decreases, they will, you will remove the server and they will bring it back to one to save cost, right? Because the more server you are creating, the more cost you have to pay. Now, let's say you are decreasing the servers here and you are bringing it back to one, then all this information you have to manually configure here, which is not the right thing, right? And here is that this server port number can be anything. The server IP can be anything. This server port number can be anything. This IP can be anything. And when the load increases, we are basically going to create more and more server. And this will be basically happened by Docker and Kubernetes. And this will be automatic scaling. This is like, you know, load is up, create more server. Load is down, remove the server to do the cross cutting. So all these things will happen like, you know, dynamically, the, how can we basically, it is not possible for us to come to the configuration file right now and change this port number and the IPs here, like, you know, in like, you know, once in a while. So how to basically solve this particular problem and how to basically discover that how many services that we have, how many instances that we have, uh, how to know that dynamically in one central location and how to tie this up with this guy. This is something that we'll be learning in the next session. This is what we call the service discovery. We, we're gonna be discover the service. Where are you service? We're gonna be finding you and we're gonna be using you. And once you are down, we don't have to do anything. We're gonna be removing you. That all these things will happen automatically by Spring Cloud, Netflix Eureka, or Zookeeper, or you know you have uh, Console. You know all these things are the service discovery clients and the service discovery servers. Uh, we'll be talking about that, the service discovery and registration in the next session. Okay, this is it for today. Any questions so far? Uh, and everything made sense so far? Yes, yes. Hmm. So make. Yes. Sir. Uh, made sense, huh? No questions? Yeah. Okay. Things are good. Aparna, Anusha, questions? Hello, sir. Yeah, Felix. Yeah. I think one day you will have one session for uh, for doing uh, debugging for, for the things we did today for web flags. Oh, okay. Web flags is I something, open, Felix. No, no, no not, not uh -huh. web flags, but open thing. Fain oh yeah, client, yeah. Fain, for Fain client, one question that Manis, Manis asked previously, I'll be looking into that, but not right now. Uh, this is not microservices, right? I'm gonna be using it, but I'm gonna tell you how to use Fain client and all. If you're gonna be giving me one session, I'll be absolutely tell you. And basically all these annotations that we have used today, these are spring annotations, right? These are not Fain annotations right here, where we have used Fain client right here, right? We have Absolutely. used... Uh -huh. Actually, what I, what, I, what I need is just the flow for deep understanding the flow, right? Yeah, the flow will be pretty simple for now, Felix. Whoever is going to call this method, okay, just call it. The implementation will be given by Spring. You remember this much? Go ahead. I'm going to be giving you guys an assignment today to do. Try to resolve that particular assignment. And uh, okay, I'll be giving you guys an assignment not compulsory, you can take your time, can do it. I'm gonna be putting it over here, I'll putting it in your repository. I'll be adding the solution for that as well. But yeah, you can try doing it, trying, try, make, try developing some fan clients 
uh, for rest calls and I'm, I'm gonna be giving you some scenarios so that you can do some hands-on and I'll be doing it today right away maybe um, when I'll be pushing my recording okay and yeah uh, as I said, right, the fan client has its own annotations. Like if you're going to see something, I don't know if it will come over here. You see a request line. These are basically originally given by your, uh, you know, Netflix. And this annotation here, you can put like, you know, which request you can put like get request, post request or something. And you can also give the endpoint right here. But in Spring, we are not using this. We are Spring, we are using get mapping because Spring has implemented fan and then Springify it by giving the spring features. So for get call, post call, delete call, make it get mapping, post mapping, delete mapping accordingly. And that's it. Just write the return type, give a method name. Method name can be anything. If, the, if any variables you want to accept or do something, you just write it over here. That's it. Okay. But yeah, I'll get you some sessions later about the fan uh, for if you want some more depth understanding of it, like some more other features of it. Yeah, yeah, Felix. And guys, for uh, like in the next session, what I'll do, I will delete this application. I will go back to here. And whatever the code we have done in the last session, last to last session, will be continue with that, right? I'll be completely deleting this one. I'll not be using Ribbon right now. And I'll try avoiding Ribbon for now. But like, you know, after around 15, 20 sessions, once you are good with microservices, Spring Cloud, I will talk, to talk about Ribbon, History X, Joule, those things which has been deprecated. In case you guys are using it, I'm gonna be telling you about that, but not right now. Right now, I'll be using Spring Cloud API Gateway, Spring Cloud, uh, you know, Resilience 4J. I'll be using this uh, Spring Cloud Load Balancer. Everything, I'll be using Spring Cloud because right now Spring Cloud is doing what? It started deprecating all the Netflix library that we used to have previously. Only right now it is using Eureka, maybe a few others, but most of the things is started uh, deprecating it. So I'm just telling you about the Ribbon right now because if somebody, you should have an idea that Ribbon is a load balancer we used inside the client side. And rest of the things, leave it up to me. Whenever the time comes, the right time comes, I'll be, I'll be actually um, letting you guys know everything in depth and in detail, okay? But yeah, give me some time. And discovery service like that, it'll take me around two, three days to clarify everything that we have inside the discovery service. But after two, three sessions, if there is any questions, ask me, I'll be clarifying it. If I'm gonna start loading off everything, then yeah, people will run away, okay? Like the people who will be, or uh, watching the video, it will not making sense to them. They'll they'll feel like okay, it is difficult or something like uh, like you know that kind of confusion we should not create. Yeah. Anyhow, but yeah, I am noting down all of your questions. Felix said, internal like you know how it is going to happen. Uh, Manis, you you have asked me a couple of questions about the rest, like in the fan client. I also have some annotations, some other things to show you guys, which is not going to be make sense with Spring Cloud. So we're gonna be keeping those discussion to the later part of the course, okay? Uh, you, you guys are okay with that or you guys want me to tell you right now, those things? Oh, thank you, sir. I believe you have noted down. But yeah, keep asking me those questions. In the next sessions also, you're gonna be having lots and lots of questions. Keep asking me those questions I'll tell you if I'll be covering it or if I'll not cover it. If I'll cover it, when I'll cover it. And in case I feel that this is something I missed and your question triggered me that one, obviously I'll discuss that. But microservices is a very broad topic and step by step we have to catch those things. If you're gonna mix up everything, this is gonna make no sense, right? Uh, basically for the people who are just newly get started, for whom I care the most, right? Because if somebody have already used on Ribbon Client, he knows what Ribbon Client is. But if somebody is new to Ribbon Client, he should know, okay, this is helping me for load balancing. And it's simple, I have just added a couple of servers. But right now, as we have discussed, if we're gonna be scaling up our server, this is not going to help us because the port number and the IP will change every time. So how will we be handling that scenario? And for that, we'll be learning the discovery. And when we'll be learning discovery, we'll be talking about that, okay? Uh, there is just an understanding mm -hmm. just, uh, because I do not have prior knowledge to Spring Cloud and Microservice also. Okay. So my question is that uh, suppose uh, whatever the concept we are implementing here, suppose let's say we are implementing load balancer, so that is a part of like we can assume that it is a feature of Microservice, right? Yes. But uh, here we are using that uh, Spring Cloud uh, like group ID, that, that means we are getting the classes from that uh, particular. Without Spring Cloud also, we, we can do the same thing. 
we can do we can do the server side load balancing we have engine next server we have client side lo load balancing yeah every concept that we're going to be learning from now uh, mm. uh somic you treat like for load balancer is a problem client side load balancer is a concept and tomorrow i'll be talk more about the client side load balancer do not get worried about that but you know that we have used ribbon here so we using ribbon which is a project given by netflix using that we are implementing the client side load balancing but that concept is equal to the dotnet python the other languages as well this is a microservices concept tomorrow we'll be learning service discovery and registration that is a concept but to implement service discovery and registration we don't have to write code from the very scratch we can use a project from spring cloud library called spring cloud netflix eureka and that is going to get us a eureka server which is going to help us to do the service discovery and registration right but we have other tools as well somebody can use jukeeper somebody can use a console there are many different uh, apis libraries that are available not only in java in some other things but service discovery is a pattern is a problem and for that problem we have this thing but the concept is same everywhere making sense somik yeah so like for uh, java microservices spring cloud is not only the solution like we can use another library as well we can also use another library but spring cloud and the spring boot is the best option <laughs> okay, okay even you can do the same thing using the spring mbc as well but you're going to be why you will be doing it because okay. all this ribbon all this library of spring boot will be best uh, can be best suited with your uh what we call that uh with your spring boot application because this is going to help you to do the auto configuration and help you to quickly write services using all this api but yes if you don't want to use boot you are welcome for that if you don't want to use spring you want to use trots and you want to build microservices absolutely possible okay yeah yeah fine any other questions no we all are good so far fine i'll see you guys tomorrow that's it for today's lesson recording stopped